Before this video starts, I want to announce that sponsor of this series is Zectorlab. They are a team of talented artists that excel in real-time character designs. They were also generous enough to give me and my community 30% discount on all of their products. You can find coupon code and link below in the bio. Hello everyone, welcome to the third episode. So in the second episode, we gave our character a little bit of life and we made it to randomize the... Um, the speed of the character, so as you can see, so now it's saying forcing walk anim uh, animation, forcing run animation, etc, etc. But this is a um, very bad way of uh, creating AI. So you could do your AI like this, right? But this is just uh, pointless and uh, the code will get messy and basically with this you will be reinventing the wheel. Why? Because there is something in Unreal Engine that's called behavior trees and the blackboard. And one runs with another, so I will explain it. Uh, let's just create a new folder and call it uh, tasks, so we have it ready for the later. And now we can create a blue uh, artificial intelligence, sorry. So go into AI. And first let's create behavior tree. Let's call this BT uh, base AI. Also, we can create a blackboard and call it BB, like a, black, a blackboard, base AI. Okay, so let me explain what is this. Well, behavior tree is basically just a tool that's gonna help you run your blackboard and the tasks that your blackboard gives you. So if we open the BT, uh, behavior tree, you can see it will require a blackboard asset, and if you if it's only one blackboard in your game, then it's automatically be here. But please do check if it's correct one. And right now here we don't have much; we just have the root of our AI. But if we uh, go and place a new node, we can see we have selector, we have a sequence, and then we have simple parallel. Let me explain what are those. First, let's start from selector. Selector is basically going to go through your tasks and on the first successful task, selector is gonna close and mark it as a success. And then it's gonna continue the flow. But sequence, on the other hand, once your task fails or succeeds, it's gonna carry on on the other tasks in the sequence. So it doesn't care if something is uh, done or not, we just carry on and we sequence it. Simple parallel is something more complex that you won't need in the start, but basically for you to know what it does, um, you can have um, um, you can have like a sequence or selector here, and here you can have your main task. So the both are gonna execute in the same time. but. For the simplicity of this tutorial, and because if it's uh, because it's third episode, we're not gonna go around that because it will just create additional confusion, and that's not good. Let's start it uh, like this. So right now we're gonna use the selector here, which is gonna select our sequence, which is gonna play our task. And for now, we have a task. Let's say uh, task is uh, is going to be. Uh, oh, of course, first we need to create a task. So how do we create task? Uh, well, it's pretty simple actually. Uh, because we have selected uh, BP base AI here, we can go here and create new task. So right now it's gonna ask us where do we want to save this asset? And the good thing we create a folder here, so it's gonna, we're gonna sa save it here. And we're gonna call it BTT task, uh, BT task, sorry, not BTT, uh, task, uh, move AI. Let's call it just like this, simple. And here I'm gonna use receive tick AI and um, no, sorry, I'm not gonna use receive tick because I don't need it on tick. I actually need it just to execute once. I'm gonna use uh, receive execute AI. So difference between the tick and uh, this one is pretty logical. Uh, the tick one executes every second, every frame, and this one executes only once when you call it. 
difference between tick and tick AI, uh, sorry, not tick, between execute and AI and execute is just that uh, here we have uh, our AI uh, reference. Okay, so we already have one, uh, let's just uh, transfer this here. We already have one uh, command for our player and what we can do right now is we can just yoink this and we can basically just copy all of this stuff here and we can just copy it here. So this is just the follow player but without the follow player uh, command of course because we don't want to repeat it. So we want to do it only once. So that's going to uh, be fine, right? Uh, self, we don't need self, we need controlled pawn and uh, that's going to be fine, I think. And very important, uh, when we finish our AI move to, on success we're gonna finish this execute by true. And what does this mean? Well, uh, let's also finish the execute by false here as well. Because um, this is very important. Because we are letting our behavior tree know, did this sequence fail or did it succeed? And it's very important because in some of the nodes here, for example in the selector, it's very important to know Oh, did this succeed or did this fail? Because the next step is going to be different, you know, if this one succeeded or failed. So it's pretty dynamic and uh, it needs to be taken care of. So we need this boolean here to be like that. We need to put some info about it. Okay, so right now this is not going to work. And also let's uh, remove this from the begin play. So let's leave it like this, we can uh, just ignore this here, nothing is gonna happen because we don't have anything in the begin play, so just ignore it. Okay, so what this was bad and we were already doing everything inside of our uh, BP Cruel doll, but what I want to do is I want to use base AI controller, because the controller is there to control AI, correct? So in the event begin play, I'm gonna run behavior tree. Let me just select which one, and that's going to be our base AI. And with that being said here, our character is going to take this behavior tree and it's going to execute whatever we tell him to do. So here, in the sequence, I'm going to call this task to move. Very simple. Just like that. And now, if I go and press play, my character is doing the thing that he's supposed to do. But if it succeeds, it will spam. Because when the sequence ends, it's gonna start another sequence. And another, and another, and another. Okay? So. I can tell him to do this once, for example. He's gonna do it once. And he's never gonna chase me again. But let's keep it like this. But still, this is all pretty basic. Because right now we're just telling the AI go move to character and uh, basically what what character is going to do, he's going to chase the player's location, as we can see here. Okay, but we can make it a little bit more complicated. Let's delete this one, and let's call this AI Patrol Started. Because what this is going to do, it's going to just uh, control the AI. From here, we can get actor location and we can simply get random reachable point in radius. 
and this will be our random location. Let's put this to be 1500. So it will take any random reachable point in the radius. So anything in the circle around him that is 1500. After the play, uh, after the AI reaches this random location, it's gonna mark it successful. And let's call this patrol uh, lap done. Starting another one in two seconds or three seconds. And here let's call this pat AI patrol lap started. And let's, um, yeah, let's make it like that. Okay, perfect. Uh, like that, like that. So now, instead of our AI following our player, he's just gonna patrol. Which, this is not most, um, most uh, random, uh, most, actually, the most perfect way you can do it, because Later on, I'm gonna teach you how to put random patrol points, so you can literally tell your AI where to go. Because what this is telling the AI is completely random, so if you have something planned for your game, for the AI to go in the exact room that you want, don't use this, because um, he's just gonna use his imagination and go wherever he pleases, you know. Okay, so, right now, if I press play, AI patrol up started. She's patrolling, she's getting to that uh, radius, and now she's patrolling again. Because we don't have something called weight. And the weight does exactly what you would think, it makes the AI wait. So for 3 seconds we have a delay, after this is done we're gonna run this, uh, because we are in the sequence. And sequence, we said, it runs one after the another from left to right. Okay, and here you have this little execution index that's gonna help you to see what runs before. So the lower number, uh, the bigger priority. It runs first. So zero is gonna run first, then one, two, three. Okay, right now if I go play, AI lab has been started. She's gonna roam around. And after she is done with that, she's gonna stop. Three, two, one, and then she goes again. There, there she goes. So as you can see, this worked perfectly, and it's gonna perma uh, path to the random locations. But of course, uh, this is not ideal, and uh, you would want more uh, of the mechanics for the AI. But for now, this is going to be completely enough for AI. Uh, you learned a lot today. You learned how to use uh, behavior trees, you also learned how to use blackboards, and we created one simple task. This is a great start for your AI, and this is more than enough for some simple horror games. But still, our AI cannot hunt us, and we're gonna go over it in the next episode. Thank you for watching guys, and see you in the next episode. Bye!